I use that name to record and write and release 2-bit rock and roll. In this series of videos, <clears throat> I've been going through the process that I use to take a song from writing it through to demoing it, to recording it, and to finally release it into the wild. It is my way of doing things, it's not necessarily the right way, it's not necessarily the way that anyone else would do things, uh, but music being an art form, who's to say what is the wrong and the right way? This is the second part, the first part, the link in description just goes through some tools that we use, introduces you to some of the, the basics behind uh, portable recorders and things like that, um, and the importance of writing your ideas down and noting things up. In this video, we'll go through some of the, uh, some of the demos, <clears throat> we'll go through one of my songs, uh, and we'll touch on some of the points that we made in the previous video about recording things, listening back to things, seeing what you do and don't like about a song and not being afraid to throw things away and to pick things back up again after you have thrown them away. The song that I'm going to be showing you <clears throat> is a song called Battlefield Heart. Now at this point in time I haven't actually got to record it to release yet, uh, which we will start touching on in the third part of this series going into the fourth which will be cleaning things up and, uh, and dealing with mastering. In this video though I have recorded two demos of this, uh, of this song, two different forms uh, which we'll touch into um, using two different methods of quickly recording things uh, and we'll, we'll go into those and touch on those. I won't be giving tutorials for anything uh, that I, I use because there are plenty of those online and if you do, if anyone does want me to touch into things in a bit more detail then ask away in the comments and I'll uh, maybe put another video together going into things in more depth or providing a tutorial on things or who knows. It's all for the future. In this video I'll just be showing you more the results of things than the actual methods as, as to go through. I'm not endorsed by anything of the, any of the products or the companies that I, uh, I use things from, um, so the opinion on them is my own. Uh, some of the tools that we touch on that we use, there are plenty of different alternatives out there, uh, so use the ones that suit you best. and. If there is a particular one that's alternate to the ones that I'll be highlighting that you wish to go and extol the virtues of, feel free to do so in the comments. And let's get to it. So the song that uh, I'll be going through is a song called Battlefield Heart. Now I wrote the song uh, maybe three years ago. Uh, based on some just uh, ideas and uh, and whatnot, the <coughs> the theme is where where we come into inspiration coming from from anywhere and all over the place. Uh, <coughs> the theme of it is uh, comes from the fact that I wanted to write a song that covered the the troubles that uh, that service people people that have been in the forces uh, have <coughs> when they come out of the forces and they're suddenly thrown into Sibby Street now. The issue there is when they've been in the military, they've been under all sorts of, uh, of control. Their, their whole lives and what they do day by day has been controlled. They're told what to do all the time by necessity. That's just the way that the forces work. And when they get thrown into Civvy Street, <clears throat> although there is a, a bit of rehabilitation that goes on um, and there is some support that they're given to them, but it is a completely different ball game. It's a different kettle of fish and it's very difficult for some of them to adjust. Um, <clears throat> so we come to <clears throat> a few years ago when uh, God, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, uh, doorbell rang um, and there's this poor sod, drunk, uh, completely confused. Uh, He'd just, just come out, young lad, just come out of the forces, done his, uh, his time there, and uh, just broken up with his girlfriend, got Joe, all the whole sort of, the, the whole thing, um, completely out of his depth with, with living in uh, a non-regimented life, just completely through him. Um, and so, talked for a while, and uh, finally sort of sent him home, hopefully a bit calmer and a bit more confident in uh, in life and uh, in his own uh, place within it. But that 
<coughs> that sent me down the line of wanting to write a song that covered that, that covered the idea of someone going away, <coughs> um, joining the military, spending that time in the military, changing in personality and coming back in a completely different person, um, and a person that's not able to look at the world and to face the world and to deal with the world in the same way as he left. So that became the core concept for, for Battlefield Heart, for the song I wanted to write. And from there, um, as we were discussing in the first video, when you have ideas like this, you, you try and find where they fit and how, uh, what kind of theme is, uh, is best to suit them. Um, and one of my favourite singers <clears throat> was Leonard Cohen, rest in peace. Uh, and he, I think, was the best at telling very emotional narrative uh, tales, stories that have a definitive beginning and end. And <clears throat> and I felt that, that was kind of maybe the best, the best style of things. I mean, I'm not Leonard Cohen, obviously, um, and uh, I, I'm not particularly a, a jazz musician or a poet or a folk singer or, or anything like that but the general feel of Leonard Cohen's songs um, seemed to me to be the best way to portray this this Battlefield Heart song that I wanted to write um, and so that's what I did that's that's what I aimed for I aimed for a Leonard Cohen-esque feel in the initial uh, stages of it and when I first sort of scribbled it down uh, I, I haven't got this the, my original recordings of it, or at least uh, I might have, but grief knows where. <coughs> Stuck on an SD card somewhere, probably from a micro. Um, but I recorded it uh, in, a, in, in outline and in sketch form in trying to get an arrangement down for it uh, on, a, on something like a, a micro BR on an acoustic guitar. <coughs> now, what that led to is then building it up and building up the arrangements uh, and then using something a bit more you know, technical go complete whatever and going through the uh, through my br 64 and what we have with the 864 uh, as we discussed in the uh, in the last video the uh, br 64 is an eight track recorder with its own drum uh, drum uh, dedicated drum track and drum loops and effects and so on on board and from there you record your tracks down onto uh, a uh, compact flash card. So the compact flash card, once you've recorded the song, and it was just just using guitar, I think uh, I put down two guitar tracks and the bass track uh, and the vocal line, and then used the BR itself, drum machine on board and drum machine to uh, to build up the rhythm, very simple rhythm. Uh, when you're recording song sketches, there's no real point in spending a long time putting drum lines together. <clears throat> uh, and you'll see in, in later videos when we come through, I, I kind of handcraft, I don't use loops, I handcraft um, my, my song's drum lines um, from scratch. Um, but for the purpose of creating a song sketch, then uh, you know, the, the time taken to do that, just, you just need the, the basic rhythm that you need in order to get a feel for the song. Um, so from there, I use the BR-864, and as you can see, the, the compact flash card uh, just quite easily pops out of the side of it then. Uh, and one of the things we were talking about uh, on the, on the uh, previous episode was how easy it is to get a song that's on a compact flash card uh, down into uh, a door or whatever music program you want to do you want to to use and you do that through a um, a converter program that's that's available freely available from boss at Roland um, and what you do there is you just pop your S, your uh, compact flash card into uh, into whatever you can use to read compact flash and then we call up this uh, this little thing that is uh, it's called <coughs> uh, the uh, wave converter um, as I said it's a free program and it's it quite easy uh, all that happens is you pop your thing in and you point <coughs> You point the uh, thing to to the drive that you've got your compact flash plugged into. Um, 
and it will read that compact flash it will show you which songs there are uh, then it will show you which tracks you've got available now I'm selecting all of the tracks here uh, just to get through but the, the tracks to the uh, to the right the tracks seven and eight um, I've used to, to bounce stuff down to and to sort of master uh, <coughs> within the um, the limited sort of uh, the limitations of the BR64 it's creating the um, the uh, the uh, stereo um, master tracks bouncing all the other tracks down into it and mixing them and, uh, just create a folder to uh, to output the uh, the final wave files to and and uh, off we go let me just give it a basic name and it'll do um, and then we will save all those and it will start thinking uh, and all it does is just outputs and into uh, raw wave um, and then once uh, once that's finished churning uh, we shall come back in a second There you can see we've got uh, all eight tracks output in uh, in wave format um, just to come straight from our compact flash now the next thing i do is i flick over to my uh, to my door and um, i use a, <coughs> a door called a cakewalk by band lab and, and it's a it's a free it's a free door but it has limitations in terms of the plugins you get now I've been using cake uh, cakewalk for quite a long time the the initial products they had way back in the early 90s <clears throat> were some of the first forays into uh, electronic computer based devices for recording and for for playing around uh, one of the main reasons I got into using it, it uh, cakewalk the original program um, was because it had a scoring um, mechanism into it uh, so I was using it to, to score some of the music that I was uh, I was writing at the time um, and it also had some pretty good looping kind of things and I was uh, I was trying to win a bet by proving that you could write a dance track in a shorter length of time than it did to play it um, so when uh, when Cakewalk started making a full-blown door uh, which they made in their product called Sonar um, a few well a bunch of years ago um, I kind of naturally went with them just my penchant for <coughs> for brand loyalty as you can see uh, and then a bit later they were bought by Roland uh, I think they were bought by Roland before they produced I think they produced Sonar under the auspices of Roland. Uh, besides which, so, so Cakewalk was a brand that I'd used before, uh, and then they married up with Roland, who are a brand, you know, with Boss and etc. etc. It's just uh, my my uh, fatalities of of brand loyalty. Um, now, in that case, so when you see the things I'm getting on my door, but by all means, go check out um, by uh, check out. Cakewalk by BandLab, but you'll see a load of plugins and different tools and everything else on the version I've got uh, because I've had Sonar Platinum, Sonar Professional, professional uh, all that jazz, and the paid for versions that are, are over the years um, leading up to them, them being bought by Gibson and and then being cast adrift uh, so fortunately band lab have picked them up and released the cakewalk framework so it's still being uh, it's still being supported uh, there are plenty of doors out there plenty so i mean check out uh, cakewalk by band lab by all means but if you use a mac then there are other ones uh, pro tools is why you know that they're, they're just this there's a, a c is a wash with uh, with doors go and find the one that, that is right for you don't chop and change and whatever find the one that does what you want it to do in the way you want it to do it uh, and, and then stick with it because to be honest I don't think there are I don't think there are many doors that are just bad they all do what they say on uh, what they say on the tin they all allow you to sort of produce and to mix and and record uh, music which is the the whole purpose of them uh, some are more complex some do some really clever stuff and uh, some are, are really basic so just go out there 
do your shopping before you go around it, just find the one that fits you that fits your personality and go for it um, so <clears throat> what we have with uh, here is we can all I'm doing is I've just created a basic uh, a basic template uh, layout and then just drag and drop the uh, the wave outputs from the um, from the uh, wave converter and drop them into audio tracks on the door and it's really 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 easy um, you can you can line them up automatically I'm sort of dragging things around and whatever but there there are um, <clears throat> there are tools within the door to be able to line things up a, a lot easier than this um, so so yeah uh, by the way I've got an addictive drums track there that just uh, one the, the bass templates I use always have an addictive drums track um, the templates that I've created for myself templating templating is a really good thing by the way um, but never get yourself locked into it so if you start with a template that has everything you need in it uh, and you'll see when we come to uh, part three of this when I start recording things properly you'll see that I have a lot of drum tracks not just one drum track uh, and that I've split off <coughs> and uh, and generated and put together a template that has all my my bass amp settings my bass recording settings uh, my bass effects settings and things uh, and then that gives me a baseline to work to and, and I adjust them for every song because you know sometimes you don't want such heavy guitars on some things sometimes you want to change the mix on things sometimes whatever it doesn't bloody matter having a template to start with makes things a lot easier you have your default settings there go ahead and record and then don't be afraid to drift off that template and just do what you need to do with it uh, to suit the song um, so yeah just uh, play around and what I'm gonna do is just add the a few odds and sods here and there just to uh, just to make the uh, to clean the track up a bit um, so what uh, what I'll do is I'll we'll just have a listen shall we it's um, this is the the first demo demo if you like uh, so beyond beyond actually getting uh, getting the basis <coughs> of the song down you know me and my micro or whatever I recorded on sitting there an acoustic guitar and working on the chords and and the bass arrangement and so on so what this represents is is the first time that I came in um, the first time that I came in and actually tried to make a, a decent go of recording it and just seeing what I could uh, come up with and see if there's ideas now the reason why you do this and this is quite important I think this is quite important the reason why you record basic things or record something to uh, just in a demo way and your your initial thoughts on things is so you can listen to it it's not so you can have it actually down on recording and keep a library of demos or, or anything like that it's so you can listen to it uh, and so what you do with these things is you cut them down to a CD or put them on your phone or put them on a USB stick or whatever the heck you want to do uh, and then listen to it listen to it everywhere listen to it through headphones listen to it on your worst mini stereo plug-in phone speakers that you've got listen to it through your, your house sound system listen to it in the car just listen to it and listen to it for a good few weeks uh, and the, the reason why you do that is you get an idea for what that how that song feels and whether it still feels the way you want it to do and and if you like it and uh, and if there's any other ideas that you can layer into it that uh, that look good or if the vocals don't track you'll pick that up or if the it, sometimes you can sort of come up with ideas and think oh i think this key this key change maybe that needs to be a seventh instead of a, a major or what all of this you're not going to get that unless you work at a song and you're not going to get that unless you listen to it so the whole purpose of this is to listen to it 
do other things as well play it to your mates go and anyone that will listen to it give them to accept critique uh, don't don't be um, don't close your mind to people turning around and saying well you know this could be like this or this could be like this you know they, they've got different ears to you they will have uh, different uh, ideas of, of music to you they may be huge pop fans or something so they'll listen to your song with a with a pop music type ear and uh, I mean if you're writing and producing pop music then great but um, and they'll just give you a different a different perspective on your song and you can take their advice or ignore their advice that's just all I mean you can take or ignore my advice whatever but uh, if they they'll come up with things and some of them will be positive and some of them will inform you and you know, allow you to feed that back into your song so that um, you can just make it better uh, so uh, we can we'll have a listen to a few bars of this what I'll do is I'll put the demo songs up um, as well uh, just mark them as demos or all the demo versions that we're going to be listening to uh, so you can listen to the whole thing if you so wish um, and the link will be in the description for it but uh, we're just going to listen to you know uh, just a short section and then I'm just going to uh, just well critique it and critique myself really you'll see <laughs> So that's the the first <clears throat> first run through demo of it um, on the YouTube on this YouTube video by the way you'll only hear it in mono because it's just coming out of a monitor straight down to a mono mic uh, but on the on the other one you'll hear the stereo not that that's gonna make it any better so I recorded a whole bunch of demo songs <clears throat> back in 2015 uh, and this was one of them and and just um, recorded them down a CD, gave the CD out to to lots of different people, uh, and listened to that CD to death. I've still got all of the demos on my uh, on my phone, and still listen to them in the car every now and again because there are still songs from that old demo that I've yet to uh, yet to actually polish up and um, uh, and put on. And there are some some songs on that demo that I don't think we'll ever see the light of day because they're bloody awful but now that comes to this <clears throat> um, now some people liked it some people didn't like it some people liked it from the fact that it told a story so they went more for the story angle to it than the music and side of it um, some people liked the music side of it but when it actually came down to it I mean I know I was going for a Leonard Cohen type feel to it and I think I got a quarter of the way there um, it doesn't really have the depth and emotion that I wanted to, to feel on it and if anything it sounds more like a really bad Bob Dylan to me really bad because it drags it's slow um, there's no kind of punchiness to it yes when the bass and the drums come in it kind of goes up a little bit of a step but um, but I found over you know listening to it for a couple of weeks or so um, I kind of I came to 
hate the damn thing. It's too slow, it's too samey, the arrangement doesn't really do much. Uh, even during the guitar solo, uh, it really does just, you know, uh, the guitar solo is pretty much, pretty much the same. So when it goes into this, I've got an octave on the guitar solo. It was, it was just wasn't much different enough about it for uh, for me to re really fall in love with the song. And here's a here's a thing. I think you should try and fall in love with your songs uh, because if you do make it in the music world or anything like that, uh, and you've written a whole bunch of songs that you hate, you're going to have to do them for decades, probably, maybe. On front of people in the I mean how soul, soul destroying is that getting up in front of your audience your thousands of people that have come to see you at some arena or whatever like that and you've got to play this goddamn song that you just cannot stand no make sure you love your songs that's that's a really really important thing and this is what happened I ended up not falling in love with this song or falling out of love with the song when you first write things and first record things and you know they're pretty cool otherwise you wouldn't really record them um but yeah not good so i threw it in the bin and that was it just want to have a shout out uh, to these guys um again not sponsored by them they've no idea i'm doing this doesn't really matter but anyway this guy uh hell guitars um they are they're really good they're in japan uh, they do all sorts of things. They do uh, plectrums. I really like the. I really like their plectrums, um, and they uh, also do modifications. They do scratch board, scratch plates, truss cut rod covers, um, knobs, uh, whatever. They're really good quality, and they have a really good service. Uh, the guy's really friendly, and always comes up with a nice little notes of thanks when if you order anything from him so that's always good um, so in return for those nice happy notes of mine I, I just want to give him a bit of a shout out at hellguitars.com they're really good service and uh, and really good products so one of the things that uh, I hadn't touched on is, uh, is, is writing lyrics now writing the music behind things is you know, I don't need to teach you that. You need to learn your chord progressions. You need to figure out which ones are right. You need to learn your chords. You need to learn your scales. That's that's uh, pretty much it. I'm not going to give you a songwriter course on there. But the lyrics, I I think um, people don't really think about lyrics so much. I find maybe it's just me, but you listen to some songs and it's it's all oh, verse that's the same line repeated three times, chorus that's a different line repeated four times, verse which is the same as the first verse. It, lyrics to me are, are quite important. Now maybe that's because I listen to people like Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen and things so the lyrics tend to progress. You'd also, my choruses tend to be really simple or not there at all. Uh, and the Battlefield Heart that we're talking about really doesn't have a chorus other than the verses end with Battlefield Heart, um, repeated a couple of times. Um, there's a song of mine called Game that doesn't really have a chorus at all. It's, well, you, it, it just follows a narrative and um, it doesn't really have that sort of repetition, uh, rep blah, repetition side to it. Anyway, uh, writing lyrics, <clears throat> I think should be, you should follow the same process or a similar process to when you're writing stories that a song to me a song should have a start a middle and a finish the same as a a short story or a novel or anything like that a start a middle and a finish and I, the first thing the first thing i do when i'm writing uh, lyrics down and sometimes i mean quite often it's actually the lyrics the lyrics tend to drive what i'm doing with the with the music and it's it 
uh, it's about 50 50 music first lyrics first whatever um, I tend to have a line or two floating around but if you block a song out so you go uh, this is the start this is what I want to say in the start this is um, this is what happens in the start just a synopsis not not actually trying to write lyrics but just a there's just a, a, an overview of what you want to say uh, where the, your story narrative is going to go for the song or or uh, the, just a general outline of what you want to do there and then same with the middle and the same with the end and within that framework that gives you a framework in which to write your songs in which to write your lyrics down now it may be that you've already got a verse verse chorus verse chorus middle solo whatever arrangement sorted out and um, and that might be a good place to start you you've got your you've got your beginning middle and end sketch then write down the structure of the song you want to do you know maybe uh, okay to tell the beginning of the song i need <clears throat> i need a couple of verses and a chorus to tell the middle of the song i need a verse a chorus and then i need to break up because the middle of the song is where the action's happening that's you know where where a couple of hobbits are bloody off there doing something and uh, I need to to build up something for that with the with the middle um, to to get through that the bridge needs to break into into uh, the what's going to eventually be the climax at the end of the song so I need to sort of get that through or the or the, the bridge might be the beginning of the end you know and it just might be that that elevated sweep into something that, that charges down the hill to your, the end of your song. Um, but, but have a think of that you know you got your structure there and then go and write that in fill in the blanks get the uh, get the verses out on a verse by first basis to progress you know that if you've done uh, right I, need, I want two verses and a chorus for my uh, for my uh, beginning section then say beginning stuff in those two verses there you know to drive the the general scope of your lyrics through for <coughs> for what you're doing now uh, and don't be afraid and in the same with everything that we're doing here everything that we're doing don't be afraid to change tack don't be a chain afraid to go well two verses and a chorus doesn't bloody work for that I, i'll just do one verse i'll do verse chorus verse uh, verse i'll do um i'll do uh, an early bridge i'll anything or i'll do one and a half verses why not you know you might want to do, uh, have two parts to your verse um it might be verse uh, verse 1a verse 1b um and then verse 2a and then chorus so it, it, just uh, mix things up and don't be afri afraid to experiment and don't be afraid to to change from whatever structure you've sketched down your first things it's like you know when when artists paint they, they draw stuff first and if the final painting uh, if they hadn't changed anything from that first sketch they did, the final painting is just going to be a bunch of stick men. So, and what's the point of that? Picasso sitting there painting stick men. That's what everyone wanted to see, wasn't it? Um, also, get yourself one of those. Or one of those. Whichever. Or both. Or from a completely different publisher. But definitely rhyming dictionary songwriters rhyming dictionary songwriters rhyming dictionary uh, it does does things um, sort of by lyrical content there's a bit more in it um, going through there and uh, the rhyming dictionary is aimed at anyone that sort of writes verse um, it's it's sort of a poet and songwriters and whatever tool um, I think poets would would scream at that one um, but it's a little easier to use when you're actually trying on a day-by-day -day basis trying to uh, put lyrics together uh, that's a little harder but you can get you know it's got it's got more give you a look, look at the, i'll give you an example right about the same thickness the page is about the same thickness that's the inside of the songwriter's book compared to wall-to-wall -wall text for uh for the rhyming dictionary more in that less aligned to songwriters less in that easier to use for lyrics song lyrics there we go make your lyrics mean something and tell a story that's all so where you might ask 
Where does that leave a song? Well, it doesn't really matter. If you've written a song and you record it and you listen back to it and you fall out of love with it and you decide that <clears throat> don't care for this song anymore, then it's your song. You know, it, you do what you like with it. And if it if it does, if you do fall out of love with it, just don't be afraid to throw it in the bin. Don't be afraid. But and here's where the skip forward uh, a year or two comes in um, don't throw things away permanently because what you might find is that you come up with you know, another idea where we're talking about uh, in the last video about uh, different ideas coming up <clears throat> uh, to to pair with ideas that you've had before that suddenly seem to make sense and seem to uh, to go for things and this is what happened um, I found I found that uh, what I was uh, what I was thinking of was more in the in the arrangement side of things. I think the song was okay. I, I love the lyrics. The lyrics are great. The story that they tell is uh, is quite nice. But the the arrangement for the song that's what was wrong. The speed of it and the arrangement of it. Um, so that led me. <coughs> to try again about a year later so this time what I decided to do was to make it a bit more of a uh, no it's still sticking with the whole Cohen-esque like you know, feel to it um, but try and put a bit more atmosphere a few more layers to it uh, and so what we had in the first in the first one we basically had two layers to it one was the the guitar on its own guitar and vocals uh, and one was the when the bass comes in so you've got guitar vocals and bass and they're just the, the only two layers within the song um, so what I did with the, the next version of it is I added uh, three layers maybe four layers to the song uh, and this is just shading so you you shade things in in uh, <coughs> from from black to white yeah so the, the, if you you've got your palette of of color in in a song uh, and if that color is all the same bland shade of gray then that that song isn't going to be very interesting and it's going to be a battle to listen to it from end to end if you start putting in different shades to it uh, different shades and then link those shades together with with different hooks then it starts getting a bit more interesting to listen to uh, people will listen to songs uh, waiting for hooks to come up for those changes in shade and uh, sometimes it's even the hooks that they will be where they can battle through a song that they don't particularly like if they just took it as a song on its own uh, but they'll listen to it because they're waiting for the particular two seconds or whatever uh, that they do like to, to crop up. You know, the bland chorus, uh, bland verse, bland verse, bland verse, hook going into the chorus. Yeah, hey, that's it. That's what we want. And then bland rest of chorus, bland verse, bland verse. Yes, that hook again. Oh, I love it. And and sometimes it's it's ridiculous the, the way that uh, the human psychology works. But but that can draw people into the song and and make it a little bit more interesting. So. Um, what I've done, what I did originally, is you started off with this church organ kind of going through. So this is the the lighter shade, if you like. Came out of the mountains when they asked. Got given a rifle and told to do my part. So that's the first start of the uh, the first bit of the shade. It goes on like that for uh, for somewhat, um, and then as it's coming out of the out of the organ. Now, this is <clears throat> this is where it's a demo, and you know what you want to do, but you don't really care too much about hitting them until you know you come to record it finally. But uh, even this, but uh, there's there's stuff I don't like about this version of the song. So. Yeah, there, there are ideas, but we'll get to that in the third, the third instalment of this. Um, so we got where the bass and the drums come in in this, and because it's because we just had that church organ going, um, 
it it's more it's more of a punch you know you're elevating it up more that that first sort of kick in uh unfortunately the, the, what i don't like about this is <coughs> or the whole thing you know the word heart in the thing and the bass the drums and everything else they all sort of are meant to go together and in the first demo did they did get them bang on um and the the bass side of it uh, slid into the note rather than trying to get the note back on and i think that slide works better than trying to get the note bang on on time but you'll see that it, it's just it's just out of sync for the hook to work properly to its full so it's this is this is uh your battlefield heart you see you just missed the time and that's the snare that comes down left behind a woman so just drop the drums out from the snare a bit to go into this so you still got the church organ there, but it's just was told it all. So this is more like the original demo, but now you've got that organ going underneath it to fill out the sound a bit, and you know, I mean, it's still still work needs doing to it to get it right. Now the next hook, uh, and this is this is why this is I was just tinkering around with sound effects and, and something else, um, and talking to them about <clears throat> about a friend. Uh, with a friend and I kind of I kind of thought this is what brought this song back to to focus for me to think oh, I'll fish it out of the bin and I'll do some more bits to it um, was I can actually break up you've got this bit the whole thing at the beginning where he f goes into being recruited and he's is you know he's, he's leaving his home and he's going off to to war and everything. I could <coughs> Uh, I need something. I needed something to break up. Saying, "Well, now he's there. Now he's he's in the military and he's doing stuff and he's shooting at people." Um, and they're playing around with sound effects. I thought, I thought, you know what I could do? I could just break the song up and have another another hook in there with a change of tone and things, and just stop the song dead uh, on a gunshot. Now I'll, I'll play it to you. Then I'll. Uh, there's some, an interesting thing that someone someone told me when they were listening through it for me and critiquing on it. We've, uh, this is how it goes. Get you a battlefield. It comes in. They came around us and through our lines. So, <clears throat> what, uh, when I played that through the first time um, that someone who was listening it for uh, through to criti critique it for me uh, first time they listened to that they thought that was that was the end of the song that that was that was it the, the guy had been shot and and the song was over um, and they said to me they said it they had that that couple of seconds because they had that story building up and all through the lyrics uh, and then suddenly they hit that gunshot and they thinking that it's all over they spent a couple of seconds going i want to know what happened to him like um like a cliffhanger or something like that it wasn't the intent to build it into a cliffhanger but that's uh, you know the people have taken it that way so that's uh, it's turned into more of a hook than i thought it was no more poignant hook than i i thought it was going to be so that's um that works out quite well so the gunshot that particular gunshot is uh, is not the one that I'm going to be using on the final thing. I've got a, uh, a gunshot that I can I can manipulate a bit more and add a bit more sort of body to it. Um, but it's uh, still similar. Gunshot's a gunshot. Um, <clears> the <throat> stop's dead and it cuts the heart off. That's the point. It's it's a it's a full stop that sort of just cuts the song up, uh, not a traditional break. Um, and uh, then it. Uh, it flows through to uh, through to the solo, which is uh, pretty similar. It kind of breaks down. The more of an octave and less of an echo on it because you've got you got that kind of distorted rhythm going underneath it now so so the the sort of clean echoey sound that was on your first demo it just wouldn't work on this one it just um it you'd lose it in the in the wish so or wash wish wash i know what i was trying to say 
and yeah, so the, this kind of brought the song back to life for me, and then, uh, and that's that's what you do. You, you fish songs out the bin, you throw songs away if you don't like them, um, but then you pick them back up again if you sort of come up with some ideas and you think that's uh, that. You, do you know what? I, I can breathe more life into that, and I think that would uh, I could make it and totally transform it into a song I do like, and and now I do. I do like the song. Um, in terms of uh, of arrangement, I've played with a few. Uh, going into actually going to record it as a as a, a proper song for release There's a few things that I thought of doing and you come up with ideas and then you try them out and then you throw them away So so for example um, Having a, a mouth organ play the last post over the the intro of it uh, but then again someone to, that listened to the song to critique it for me see th this is it you get too close to your songs so they always sound unless you really hate them but they always sound okay to you in terms of the arrangement that you put together you play them to someone else and they might go oh god you know it's like this is a bit long or this bit's a bit whatever and uh, um you can take that on board and uh well, they were saying that the organ part at the beginning it just it's too long in an intro so where I was thinking of going, well, we could add to the intro, we could have mouth organ uh, playing um, playing the last post, you know, a bit of blues harp on the, on the last post to make it a bit more poignant as we're going through. And uh, I think this is around, <coughs> around um, Remembrance Sunday. If any, any of you Brits and, and Australians and whatnot will know what a Remembrance Sunday is. Um, to, uh, to Americans, that's your Veterans Day, I think. But um, it's uh, Remembrance Sunday started uh, in off the, off the back of World War One, <clears throat> uh, and this year was was the hundredth anniversary of the end of that. So uh, I, I think I just had that on my mind, and I thought, yeah, we could do the last post at the beginning, and you know, then feed in. So you got a church organ kind kind of feel going, the last post playing over that, and it's sort of wailing blues up. Um, and then uh, and then coming into the song and then you sort of uh, I kind of realized that that would make that would make the the whole introduction of it hugely hugely long and if if people were sort of already saying to me well you know what the beginning of that song it's uh, it's a tad too long and you know, well okay so making it longer might not be a good idea um, but there are other things that I want to change from uh, from that. The gunshot I want to make a bit different. Um, the I want to make sure <clears throat> I, I'm going to put something into the arrangement to do it. A sort of pre-hook, if you like. Uh, I think the bass slide in the first demo works going into that. You know, the punch on the heart, the first sort of change in shade. Um, and so I want to put that back in, so I can you can have that lead in and and have that punch on the nail with the with the word heart and that's got to work um, and the, the the church organ I've kind of gone off the idea of having it, it as a church organ so that might be a it might turn into a Hammond I might um, I might have a Hammond going uh, and just a bit of modulation on that so it just breaks it up instead of that droning it, it has a bit more um, colour to it so, so that might liven up the beginning. I think it's probably the beginning is too dark, so it just needs to lighten up a bit. And I think putting a Hammond in there with a bit of colour, with a bit of modulation in it, still sort of the same and going underneath. <clears throat> um, maybe not so pervasive, not so loud, I don't know. But then going into uh, into the, the remaining with, with the, the song as it's going through, like the church organ does. Um, and I think that will back up and it will it'll make the sound a, a bit more round and embody it out um so yeah the, the, there are other things that i'd uh, i'm going to change as well uh the guitar sounds on it the uh, the amp there is a bit too uh, raw um i i've i've found when i've been recording uh, when i've been recording my songs for release uh, i found that i prefer and, it, and it's they're my bloody songs, so you know I can prefer the guitar sound that I like. Um, I prefer a, a much sort of deeper, bassier sound on it, <coughs> um, which is dead easy. All the guitars I play are Les Pauls, so um, getting uh, getting a nice 
deep sound, <laughs> rhythm sound out of them uh, isn't too hard. Um, and I'd also, uh, also for the beginning as well, instead of having a uh, an acoustic guitar, uh, sorry, instead of having an, a clean electric guitar, um, where we've got on that first on this first section here. Left behind. I might, um, I might have a, an acoustic guitar, or actually I might add an acoustic guitar in. Um, so, you know, all, all of this is gonna be completely re-recorded. I, I don't, when I'm going from demo to actually recording from it, I don't keep anything. I, I throw everything, well, I'm just not throw everything away. Keep that as the demo, create a whole new project, do everything from scratch, re record everything, redo the vocals. And the, the vocals need a lot more life in them. <clears throat> um, they, uh, I, I don't know whether I'll go up an octave. Well, I certainly won't go up to an octave for the first verses. I think they're pitched at, at the right. Um, yeah, so adding an acoustic guitar into that, into that first part of the guitar it will just round the round the body out of that so you'll have the bass doing its thing which is um whatever style it is and uh, you've got the guitar just the electric guitar just playing sort of single accented notes uh, and a few runs and if you've got the, an acoustic guitar just tracking along um just strumming underneath that lower down in the mix but just to you know keep the thing going um and a, a usual sort of additions of yeah bits of percussion and, and what have you i don't think it uh, it particularly needs much I, I, this the drums the drums on this particularly in that bit where you've just got the rim you've just got the uh the floor tom and a, a bass sorry the bass drum and the and the rim just going <coughs> that doesn't really need anything else it's it's sparse and it's meant to be sparse and it's, it's that on on purpose it's just a uh it's just meant to be that step above the the intro where there is no or the first verse where there is no drums into that you know just opening bit and then so you've got the opening <coughs> um opening kick on that heart uh, which hooks you in and then it comes back down again so you've just got that you know rim shot going going through um up until it just picks up a little bit again um so that's you know uh, the, the layering tambourines and everything else into that is uh, it's not going to work too well so that's uh, that's basically it that's putting into practice some of the things that i was talking about last uh, last time um the uh we, we've taken a song now in in brief uh there's no like I said, there's, there's no tutorials here, uh, really, per se. Uh, but we've taken a song through from um, from initial idea and initial concept and what I wanted to write about um, through to um, through to a couple of demos. You know, I, I wanted to to do this song particularly uh, in this set of set of uh, series of videos because of the fact that I threw it away um, because it highlights. It highlights that aspect of of writing stuff. You, you come up with a song and you don't like it, then throw it away. But the idea still is is there. I mean, it, it doesn't because you've thrown the song away. It doesn't make the idea any any worse. And in fact, it doesn't actually make the song. Um, it doesn't make the song any worse. It just makes the song that you didn't like. Um, and as you can see here, this is the same song. It's just got more colour in it, and I like it more. Um, so yeah, it's it's an, as a prime example about what I was saying in the first video about don't be afraid, frightened to throw stuff away, but keep things around because you know you might uh, you might find you fall in love with them again or come up with some other idea that matches up with what you had before um, that will just bring it a bit more to life and and that's exactly what happened here and it's why I wanted to pick this song also because it's one I want to release and and I haven't recorded it yet so. You're, you're with me on the journey to this and uh, and we'll see how it turns out. Um, 
so in the in the third video in the third video that's what we'll be doing um you'll you'll see me shouting into microphones and stuff like that so we'll uh we'll be picking up recording it entirely within the door no sort of uh, you know any of the brs we're leaving the brs behind now this is the last episode that they'll uh, you'll have to put up with anything like that um and uh yeah so should be interesting um so here we go right um that's all for this video so see you in part three until then <laughs>